How's it going, everybody? So, I want to present you guys with a very, very special video to basically wish all of you guys a happy Pokemon Day. Woo! 22 years of Pokemon being in existence, man. Oh my god, like... I just can't believe this, man. Like, where does the time go? Seriously, where does the time go? It's like, I felt like that it was only, like, what, maybe last year that, you know, I was first introduced to Pokemon by my brother. This was back when I was, like, very, very, very young and very small and tiny and all that stuff. The first way I was introduced into Pokemon was when my brother gave me some of his action figures. I remember he gave me the Charmander line when it came to action figures, and he gave me a mini Blastoise, he gave me a big Blastoise, and he gave me uh, Raichu and Pikachu. I'm just like, what? It's like, so right then and there, kind of kick-started my love and my passion for Pokemon. Now... I don't want to make this too, too long of a video, but I am going to talk about some of my most memorable experiences when it comes to playing the Pokemon games, and I also want to know down below in the comment section what your guys' most memorable experiences was when it comes to playing Pokemon, and just in Pokemon in general. It just doesn't have to be related to the games. It can be related to the anime, it can be related to the manga, like, it can be related to whatever you want. So, with that being said, I also want to apologize for being shirtless. Uh, not even I'm not even gonna lie, I'm a little bit lazy to put on a shirt, but here's the thing, man, is that it's hot as hell right now, so I don't exactly want to be sweating more than what I already am. So, with that being said, let's get underway with the video. So, kicking off with Generation 1, you know, that's where it really all began for me when it came to actually playing the Pokemon games. Um, now the thing is, is that, you know, I, there's a lot of memories when it comes to Generation 1 for me, but some of the most memorable things that took place in that generation, number one, were the really cringe-worthy sprites, and I mean, you take a look on the screen right here, here's one of them, that being Executor, I mean, when I first seen that, I actually, I was legitimately scared, I'm like, Whoa, it's like, I'm not, I'm not even sure if that's, uh, if that's kid-friendly, you know? I'm just like, what? But, and also, you know, back then I was really young and kind of a pussy as well. I was scared of just about everything, you know? Um, but also another sprite that was really, really funny was coughing, you know? Because if we remember what coughing actually looked like, it had the skull and crossbone symbol below its face, not above. So I'm just like, damn, did they ever butcher that really badly, you know? Um... Not to mention also the Missingno sprite. You know, the Missingno Pokemon, the glitch in general, man, that was something that has enough memories to last me a lifetime, you know? I remember I was able to beat the game so bloody easily by spamming the Missingno glitch and cloning up a bunch of rare candy to basically just soup up all of my Pokemon to level 100 and beat the Elite Four. So that way, I would be allowed to embark on the ultimate challenge, the ultimate dream of catching Mewtwo in the Cerulean Cave. Now, I think the rest is history from there, you know? I was... I, it was just, it was such a crazy game, you know, but there was times that I did try to beat the game without, you know, the use of glitches or cheating or whatever. It was definitely a lot harder than, uh, than, you know, you were cheating. I mean, that, make that the obvious statement of the year, you know. Um, I had a really hard time beating the game without the use of the missing no glitch, uh, but I was eventually able to beat it through grinding and through knowing my types and, uh, what Pokemon were the best things to use against said opponents in the Elite Four and against the champion known as Blue, or as I used to call him, Gary, because, I mean, I, back then, I didn't I didn't know about universes and all that stuff. I didn't know that uh, what took place in the anime and what took place in the games were actually uh, two different things, you know? Uh, when I seen Blue and I seen the resemblance of Gary, I'm just like, yep, you're Gary. You, you, you are Gary. You have the same arrogant personality as one another, and I'm just like, yep. And it felt really good to be able to beat Gary and to become the new champion, and even have Having his own grandfather congratulate me right in front of him. I was just like, damn, man. Like, that was honestly really special. And not to mention, also, the ending was really, really good. It was really well done for what it was worth. You know, Generation 1 did have a lot of glitches, and it was still fairly, fairly new. But the thing is, though, is that they, they did the best they could with what they got, and it turned out to be amazing. Like, I was definitely, definitely blown away with especially the ending, you know? The ending, you know, it just made you feel like you really accomplished something, right? But with all that being said, though, uh, there's a whole bunch of memories that I would like to share with you guys, but that would make the video go on for, like, I believe, hours. And I don't think you guys want to sit through a video that long, you know? 
So, with that being said, we're actually going to skip Generation 2 because I didn't get to play Generation 2 until after I got to play Generation 3. So with that said, let's get on with Generation 3. Now the reason I skipped Generation 2 is because I actually didn't have access to the likes of Pokemon Gold, Pokemon Silver, or a Pokemon, or a Pokemon, blah, 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 a Game Boy Color, not a Pokemon Game Well, you could say Pokemon Game Boy Color if you want, because I'm pretty sure Memory Serves, they did have special uh, Pokemon-themed Game Boy Colors. But with all that, though, Generation 3, man, let's get on with it. I actually ended up having a, uh, a Game Boy Advance SP, you know, one of them little foldy things right there. And it was actually really good and really compact. I loved the design of that machine. Um, even though my first game was, of course, Deer Hunter, I couldn't get into that game whatsoever, you know? I mean, it's just, it just wasn't my thing. But, anyways, so, I ended up seeing Pokemon Sapphire at Micmac Mall, you know, at the Toys R Us, and I was pestering the shit out of my dad. I was like, Dad, come on, you gotta get it for me, please, 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 like, let me have it, let me have it. He eventually caved in and got it for me, and the reason I got Pokemon Sapphire was because of what was on the box art. I didn't know what Pokemon it was, but I'm like, my god, that is the most beautiful Pokemon I have ever seen. I want to get that Pokemon, hence why I'm getting this game. <laughs> so anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I ended up getting the game. Started out with Mudkip, and the fact is that I was very green when it came to uh, Pokemon Generation 3. I had no idea what Pokemon to expect. I didn't know their typing. I didn't know... I didn't even know abilities existed i actually didn't even know what abilities were i just kind of ignored them because i'm just like well okay you know ability uh, i guess an ability must be like a character trait or something like that like i knew nothing about that you know but anyways i end up going through the game and i ran into some very very major difficulties such as the second battle with may because i end up having marshdop who unbeknownst to me had a four times weakness to grass type moves and she kept on killing me off man with that goddamn grovile and its grass type moves but i was able to beat it eventually and the thing is also i gotta say the music and and the graphics combined like it was a very very big shocker to me you know seeing how well of a transition you go from generation one music and graphics to generation three music and graphics i'm just like good god man it's like this game is incredible it is kick ass and the story that they had behind Generation 3 games was also very incredible, and there was also really epic battles that I had, such as with Team Aqua Leader Archie. Like, the music was incredible, and also the stage was set uh, after you end up beating him the second time around, which was at the uh, Seafloor Cavern, I believe the uh, place is called. He would end up awakening Kyogre, and I'm just like, oh man, is this is this the Pokemon right here that I have an opportunity to catch? Well, nope, not exactly yet. It just teased us and ran away. So I end up going to the Cave of Origin, and this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is where the best memories of Generation 3 come into play. Uh, I end up spending so many sleepless school nights, you know, where I shouldn't really have been sleeping, but, you know, me being a very, very gung-ho kind of uh, young boy, you know, I was just like, man, it's like, I want to keep on playing, I want to keep on playing. But the thing is, man, is that uh, I didn't have a Master Ball to be able to catch this thing, because I actually didn't even know when you were going to get a Master Ball, or how you were going to get it, or where you could even find one, right? But... Little did I know, you could have actually got the Master Ball at the uh, Lily Cove hideout for the Team Aqua, and I'm just like, well, shit, it's like it's a little bit too late for that now, isn't it? So, anyways, I was spending so many sleepless nights trying to catch this thing at the Cave of Origin. It kept on one-shotting all my Pokemon, with the exception of, I think, uh, Swampert, right? Swampert was tanky enough to live one Rain Boost and Hydro Pump. But after that, the rest was history. Magneton shit the bed. Hariyama shit the bed. I'm just like, God damn it, man. I'm not going to be able to catch this thing, am I? But I was able to miraculously catch it one night. And <laughs> I just about let out one of the biggest yells. So I wanted to let out a big yell of celebration, but... It was like 3 in the morning and my parents were asleep. I'm like, okay, maybe I shouldn't do that because they think that something was going on here. And technically something was going on. It was me playing when I should have been sleeping and focusing on my school studies and all that stuff. But anyways, though, man, it was just absolutely amazing that I was able to catch Kyogre and the rest was history from there. I grinded that thing up like crazy. I was able to actually, surprisingly enough, I was actually able to solo Wallace with just Kyogre. Although, Milona really did annoy me, but I was able to beat Wallace and get my 8th badge, and then we got on it to Victory Road, and I plowed through all the trainers, leveled up Kyogre. I soloed the rest of my journey with Kyogre. I mean, 
I was able to beat the Elite Four. Sydney and his Dark Types had nothing on me. Uh, Phoebe and her Ghost Types didn't present too much of a challenge. Uh, Glacia and her Ice Type Pokemon didn't present me too much of a challenge until I got to Wall Rain. Man, that thing was so annoying to face. I'm just like, come on, man. Like, this, this can't be right, you know? This is not cool. But sure enough, ladies and gentlemen, I was able to beat it. And then, of course, Drake just got destroyed with his with Ice Beams, right? His Pokemon, his Dragon Pokemon got wrecked. But then, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest twist that I've ever seen so far in Pokemon was the fact that our friend Steven was actually the champion. Now, the thing is, I knew nothing about this guy. I didn't know what Pokemon he was going to use. Um, the thing is, I actually did know about Skarmory because I did know a little bit about Generation 2 despite me not playing the game. I knew it was a Steel Flying type, so I knew it wasn't going to be too much trouble. I was able to one-shot that thing with a rain-boosted attack. But then, it's like the rest of the Pokemon he used, I actually had no idea what types they were. You know, Claydol, Agron, Cradley, Armaldo, and then, ladies and gentlemen, we got to the coup de grace being Metagross. And I'm just like, oh shit, I'm gonna get absolutely obliterated by this thing, because this thing looked like a badass, and I bet it could play the part of one, too. But, no, I was able to beat him. But the thing is, though, is that when I seen Metagross, I'm like... I want that thing. I want that Pokemon. And that was that was kind of when the whole thing started for me was when Metagross became my favorite third generation non-legendary Pokemon. And I'm just like, man, I gotta have it, you know? But I was able to beat the game. But man, oh man, like I gotta say that I felt like that was on autopilot, right? I'm just like, holy shit, that's just crazy, you know? I, I just I couldn't believe it, man. But the thing is, the ending made you feel really special. It actually made you feel like you accomplished something because of the fact that the music was good and the slideshow of all the Pokemon that you had was absolutely beautiful. And I love what they did at the very last picture of the slideshow, showcasing your first ever Pokemon being your starter Pokemon. That was absolutely beautiful. Now, with all that being said, woo! I gotta say, man, is that there's a lot of other memories when it comes to Generation 3, but the biggest memory... Uh, in my opinion, it was, well, you know, it was obviously my opinion because they're my memories, <laughs> but anyways, guys, the biggest memory for me was, in fact, Kyogre, and coming in a very, very narrow second place was when I first encountered Metagross, so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's now backtrack to Generation 2. So then, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to Generation 2. Now, how I ended up going about obtaining the ability to play Generation 2 games was the fact that I had a friend who did not want his Game Boy Color anymore because it was defective. It was like something about it wasn't working right. I uh, couldn't exactly remember off the top of my head what it was, but I'm just like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll use it. I mean, I'll see if I can make it work and all that stuff. Um, and I also had a classmate who was also a friend of mine who allowed me to play both Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver. I'm just like, man, that is awesome. And I gotta say, it was all set and ready to go from there. My journey for Generation 2 began, and my god, what a way it began. So, the starter Pokemon that I ended up going with was actually Cyndaquil, because I remembered Typhlosion being the final evolved form of Cyndaquil, and I actually really loved Typhlosion's design, so I'm just like, hey, you know what, I'll go with that, you know? Kind of break tradition up a little bit, because normally, you know, I'm a water kind of guy, where I start out with the water starter, because water, water typing is actually really cool, and it's one of my top favorite typings as well, but the thing is, though, man, is like, you know, I wanted to go for design rather than by typing, so I chose Cyndaquil knowing that I was going to be in for an amazing treat when it evolved finally into Typhlosion, and I gotta say, though, you know, how this whole thing started was just, it was just very, very crazy. It went from 0 to 60, like, right at the beginning, because the thing is, is that shortly after you chose your starter Pokemon, you end up having Professor Elm frantically call you to say that uh, something had happened, that someone went in and stole one of his remaining starter Pokemon, and the thing is, is that he was actually your rival. This thief was actually your rival of the game, and it wasn't your typical, you know, next-door neighbor, snot-nosed kind of neighbor that was all cocky and arrogant and stuff like that. No! This was somebody completely different. I'm just like, man, this is going to be pretty interesting. So, the thing is, he wasn't exactly too, too much of a challenge, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, I got a question to ask you guys, and I'm willing to bet that my answer is going to cover about 99% of you guys when I ask you this. What is your most annoying memory of Generation 2? Uh, for me, it was Whitney's Mill Tank. Like, to start with, this Pokemon was deceptively fast. It was very bulky, 
And it had one of the most annoying combinations ever that could potentially 6-0 you if you're not ready, you know. Um, it had a trap to basically incapacitate Pokemon of the opposite gender, you know. Make it so that it has a high percentage of not attacking at all that turn. It also had Stomp to try and flinch you out if it outpaced you. It also had Roll Out, which basically meant it was going to be bad news bears for my Quillava. And not to mention, it had Milk Drink, which was a recovery move. I'm just like, this is annoying as hell. And without a shadow of a doubt, this was something that lives on in infamy even to this very day, you know. Uh, many of us remember back when we first came across Whitney's, Whitney's Milk Tank. And we had a ton of struggles and rage moments with this. And I gotta say, it felt damn good when I was finally, finally able to work over her mill tank and be able to win the badge. She ended up breaking down crying. I'm just like, well, serves you right for trying to hax us to death, you know? But we ended up getting the badge, and I gotta say, that was also a really solid memory. It was a very, very bad and infamous memory at first, but... When I was able to beat Whitney's Mill Tank, it turned into a great memory. Now, another great memory was the fact that I ended up catching Lugia. Like, I played Pokemon Silver first because of what was on the box art being Lugia. And I gotta say, man, it felt really, really good to be able to uh, not only beat Lugia, but catch Lugia too. Uh, well, technically, you can beat it by catching it, you know? Like, that, that that's, that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is obviously by KOing it and not, never being able to catch it again. But the thing is, though, is that it felt really good. I ended up using a Master Ball on it. I'm just like, there's no way I'm gonna let this thing escape me, you know? And sure enough, you know, it became one of my most MVP Pokemon ever. And I was able to sweep through the Elite Four with uh, with my Lugia, even though it's not really meant for sweeping. It's more or less meant for tanking hits and being a nuisance. But before we go any further, you know, I wanted to also address the fact that one of the best memories happens to actually be the championship battle with Lance. Now, here's the thing is that when I first came across Lance and I seen his team having three underlevel Dragonites, you know, two of them being a Witch level 47 and the other one being level 50, and I was thinking, wait a second, that's impossible. Possible. That is legally impossible because you can't have Dragonite until level 55. Like, what are you doing, man? You must be a hacker or something. Give me that Game Shark, you know? But anyways, though, all joking aside, uh, the way that the stage was set was perfect, you know? The dialogue was amazing. Like, the music cut off, and all it was was just the dialogue. And then we got to the champion battle music. My god, that was like, that was a thing of beauty right there. And when I was able to beat Lance with Typhlosion, I beat his level 50 Dragonite with a Thunder Punch from Typhlosion to finish things off. And it was just absolutely amazing. I was able to beat him. But the thing is, is that like, I actually didn't know uh, until after the game that this was a continuation from Generation 1 because right after you beat the champion of the Johto region, you actually end up getting to go to Kanto to have a second journey and be able to do it all over again. And I thought that was really cool, right? But the thing is, is that it didn't really serve too big of memories, although I will say this. Uh, Pokemon Trainer Red was definitely, definitely something you did not want to mess with unprepared, man. Like, when I first came across this guy, I was just like, what the hell? It's like, dude, man, it's like, all of his Pokemon were level 70 plus, and he had a level 81 Pikachu. I'm just like, man, I'm not going to be able to beat this guy. But sure enough, I ended up beating him, miraculously, I might add, but I had a shit ton of full restores and all that. But see, here's the thing, though, is that I was very curious about Generation 2 because it had a lot of interesting areas that I thought maybe had some hidden secrets, like maybe a hidden legendary or something. Like, Mount Mortar, for one, was very, very big. I thought perhaps that there would be, like, a, a, a legendary Pokemon that you could encounter in those mountains. But, sure enough, that didn't happen. And, same with Mount Silver. I thought that there was going to be a grand, grand legendary Pokemon. Like, I thought that, it, that you could find Celebi in there, you know? I heard so much talk about Celebi, but I never actually seen the Pokemon back then, you know? But, lo and behold, it did work out that way. How you end up encountering Celebi is for some special event in the uh, Ilex Force and a GS Ball and all that. Stuff that was way, way beyond me at the time, but... Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta say overall Generation 2 was really, really solid. But now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and fast forward on to Generation 
4. So now we get on to really, really solid differences in graphics. And I gotta say that Generation 4 was definitely something that I invested a lot of time in, you know. Uh, the first ever Generation 4 game that I got was Pokemon Platinum, you know. This was, you could say, the Pokemon Yellow version of Generation 4, where you got the best of both worlds, where you could catch, you know, version-exclusive Pokemon, both of them, uh, in that single game. It was absolutely amazing. So, with all that being said, when I first started out, I chose Piplup because I actually knew ahead of time that its final evolution was Empoleon, and Empoleon was just... Man, it was a masterpiece of a Pokemon, you know. I absolutely enjoyed that Pokemon, using that Pokemon. The typing was amazing. Design, move pool, stats, all that stuff. It was just absolutely incredible, you know. So that right there is the first big time memory right there. And that was just the beginning for me when it came to Generation 4, man. Like, when I seen the slew of new Pokemon that was introduced in that game, I'm like, what? This is amazing. And there is a reason that I chose Pokemon Platinum was because of what was on the box art being Giratina. Now, the thing is, is that... Prior to playing that game, I actually had a fair bit of knowledge about Generation 4, but not too much, though, to kind of spoil my journey when it was my first time ever. But anyways, so I was just, I was like, man, this is going to be awesome. I cannot wait to encounter Giratina. And with all that, you know, it was just absolutely amazing. The gym leaders, the gym battle music was just absolutely awesome. And I got to say that my favorite gym leader was Crasher Wake. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that... Uh, for those of you guys that know me personally, if you guys have me on Facebook and all that stuff, you notice that the word Crasher is in my my profile name. And the thing is, I took big time inspiration from Crasher Awake. He is a water type master, and I love water types. He is into wrestling. I'm into wrestling. He's into singing. Well, no, I'm not exactly into singing. I'm not. I am not gonna sing for you guys. Okay. That 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 meat on the table challenge. That was a one time thing. Never again. But anyways, though, ladies and gentlemen, like, I was just like, man, it's like, this, this guy is so cool. And that's where the whole thing with Crasher suddenly began. And we now have evolved into Mega Crasher as a channel and as a name and all that stuff. So, it, all in all, it was really solid. That was one of the more influential moments in my history of playing Pokemon was from that gym leader right there. But, ladies and gentlemen, I also gotta say, speaking of memories... Oh my god, Cyrus though. Like Cyrus, the the leader of Team Galactic, absolutely badass, you know? Like the music that you that plays when you go to face him is absolutely amazing. When you face him in the distortion world, my god, that's so incredible. It's like what? And not to mention, he had a lineup of really, really solid, tough Pokemon, including Gyarados. Like, Gyarados was the scariest Pokemon that you could ever face. Like, it had access to moves that could combat all a whole bunch of Pokemon types. Like, if I recall correctly, he has Earthquake, which did a lot of damage to my Empoleon. But here's the thing, though, man is that I was able to power through, and then we get to Giratina. Now, Giratina, man, I gotta say, wow, dude. Like, the way that it made its entrance prior to you battling it, absolutely incredible. It was so ominous, too. Like, it, it just, like, whenever the platforms appeared and you go to hop on it one by one by one, like, it would make subtle movements, and it suddenly came down, came down, 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 made its appearance known, and it stood right in front of you. I'm just like... I am legit, like, in shock right now how they did this. They, they did that scene so well, right? But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, like, I, I we get to the battle, and I'm just like, this is going to be awesome. So I wasted no time, and I used a Master Ball on it, end up catching it, and the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, it became one of my ace Pokemon alongside Empoleon, and we end up moving on to the Elite Four after, of course, we end up beating the eighth gym leader, being Volkner of Sunny of Sunny Shore City, almost called it Sunny Side City, but no, nah, man, th we ain't talking about no Sunny Side Up eggs and all that stuff, but we then get to the Victory Road, which was a pretty interesting layout, to say the least, but we end up getting then to the Elite Four, and it was a very interesting assortment of types, you know, like you had bug types, you had ground types, you had fire types, uh, you had psychic types, I'm just like, damn, this is gonna be crazy, man, and then we get to the champion itself, which shocked the hell out of me, man, Cynthia of all people, I'm just like, what? I'm like, you gotta be joking me, man. But after seeing the lineup on her team, which was arguably the most balanced and most 
toughest team to face to date when it comes to champion battles, man. Wow, like I was just, I was in shock. And little did I know, this is only her nerfed version of what her team was in Diamond and Pearl. Like, I was facing off against her nerfed version of her championship team, and it was still bloody hard to, to, to beat, you know? I'm just like, man, this is crazy. Like, it was just, like, we were trading Pokemon, trading blows all around. It was absolutely crazy. Like, I had to revive and full restore a few of my Pokemon in order to uh, keep on the battle with facing her and all that stuff, because... The thing is, is that I only had two really good Pokemon that could stand up against her. That being my starter Pokemon, Empoleon, and that being Giratina. But, lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, we end up getting the big W, and we end up becoming the champion. And, I gotta say, it was absolutely amazing. Now, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, is that another really solid memory actually happens to come in the form of the Battle Frontier. Yeah, I spent a crap ton of time there, especially at the Battle Tower. So... The Battle Tower. This, this this right here will kind of live on in infamy as one of my, uh, well, one of my more annoying memories of this generation. Because here's the thing is that I had a huge obsession with getting a really solid win streak. I wanted to get like 100 plus wins, right? And here's the thing is that there was a few occasions I was able to get past 100 wins, but the way I would end up losing that streak, that streak would end up snapping like a branch it just pissed me right off because I actually ended up getting hacked. I would get hacked to death. Like it was, it was as if like the uh, the ram ugh, random number generator absolutely hated me. I'm just like, you gotta be joking me, man. Like, like you can't, you can't do this to me, man. You can't do this to me. You can't do this to a Pokemon fan. You know? I'm just like, wow. It's like I, I, I remember I actually destroyed. A few of my Nintendo th uh, DS's like through that, you know. Um, the first time that you know I end up having my hundred plus win streak snapped, I got so pissed. I actually like I ended up throwing my first uh, Nintendo 3S right at that wall right there, and it broke. Uh, the second time, uh, I actually ended up head smashing my uh, 3DS, or not my 3DS, my, it was just regular, uh, a Nintendo DS, you know, uh, I ended up head smashing it because, again, the same sort of thing happened, except it was in doubles, like, I actually had a really good win streak going on for doubles, but I ended up, uh, getting hacked to death in that match, and I'm just like, man, I just, I was so pissed that I ended up head smashing my screen, and that was the last I ever seen that 3D, that uh, Nintendo DS work, you know, and then the third time, ladies and gentlemen, was I, I just got so pissed off that I actually ripped the sucker in half, I'm just like, man, I don't want to play this game no more, so, the thing is, man, is that, like, I was just, I was like, ugh, like, this was, this was definitely one of the more annoying memories I had of Pokemon, more specifically, Generation 4, so, with all that being said, you know, there's more memories I want to share with Generation 4, but we gotta keep on going, man, because we're only, we're only four generation in, so with that said, let's move on now to Generation 5. So, on to Generation 5, this was actually a really, like, whoa kind of generation, you know, and I mean that in a good way, you know. Um, when I first came across Generation 5, I actually ended up completely spoiling myself by looking up all of the Generation 5 Pokemon on Maryland's old website. Um, and I was a huge fan of Maryland back then, still am, you know, but, like, the thing is, man, I seen, like, the, the designs of the Pokemon, I'm just like, whoa, like, this is actually pretty wild, you know, but also, I was kind of disappointed with some of the designs as well, but the thing is, is that, you know, there's that old saying, don't knock it till you try it, right, so anyways... I ended up getting a black and white, and it was just absolutely amazing. Like, I was I was so excited. Now, my first Pokemon that I chose as a starter was Oshawott because of how adorable it was and how adorable it was portrayed in the anime. And it was also a water type, too. I mean, you can't go wrong with a water type, right? But the thing is, though, is that I gotta say that, you know, the starter trio of Generation 5 was kind of underwhelming and a little bit disappointing because of the fact that, you know, they, they like, with the exception of Superior, they were kind of slow, you know, the stats were kind of lacking in some areas that didn't exactly make them too, too competitive, you know, and this is also back then when I was trying to get into competitive battling, um, but anyway, so we then move on with the story itself. The story itself was absolutely amazing, and it really picked up in Black 2 and White 2, but I'm gonna get to that in a moment, but I gotta say, though, like, with Generation 5, 
I absolutely love that generation. And the thing is that when I first uh, seen the Pokemon that was in the Pokedex, like when I seen what the kind of Pokemon to be expecting in Generation 5, I instantly fell in love with Kyurem, yes. I was like, man, Kyurem looks absolutely amazing. And the thing is that, like, I was kind of thinking, it's like I had a little bit of a hunch because of uh, what, <coughs> what happened with Giratina in the uh, in the sequel of Generation 4, where Giratina had its own little story and it had a new form. I was thinking that uh, that it was a possibility that Kyurem could quite possibly have that sort of treatment. And lo and behold, in Black 2 and White 2, it did. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, getting back on track right here. So in Black and White, you know, the main story revolved around N and around Team Plasma, how they were, you know, Know, working together, or at least that's what it seemed like anyways, um, and the thing is that, like, N was a really interesting rival, you know, uh, you also had, of course, your two childhood friends be like, yeah, uh, you know, your rivals as well, but N was also really interesting as well, especially since he was on the, uh, on the antagonistic team at the time, and he was someone that for the first time ever actually accomplished the goal of befriending and or capturing a legendary Pokemon. And he did exactly that with uh, with Zekrom. And I gotta say, that was absolutely amazing. And then, of course, uh, the epic as hell battle between myself and N, where we had Reshiram versus Zekrom, man. That was killer, man. We tore the castle down. Like, literally, we tore the castle down in that match. And it was absolutely amazing. But then... Um, after we end up beating a Zekrom, the rest of his Pokemon were kind of, eh, you know, kind of mediocre at best. I mean, I did actually enjoy the fact that he had a Zoroark, though. That was actually pretty cool. But then, ladies and gentlemen, when we got to the after effects of that battle, when you had to face Getsis, I'm like, no way. Like, I was actually swerved big time when I seen that, man. And when I seen, you know, like, what, what, okay. What I seen unfold before me, I was absolutely in shock. Like, when Getsis turned on his son and just absolutely went ham on him, I'm like, damn, like, what the hell just happened? Is this the same Getsis that we knew, you know, uh, prior to these events? Like, what the hell is happening here? But anyways, though, I eventually end up cluing in that he was just simply using N to drive Team Plasma's own narrative. And when we got to battle him, man, like, the music was just absolutely epic. Like, the, 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 the drums, and then you had the chorus. I'm just like, what? It just, it's, that's just so insane. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that the most terrifying part about the battle was Hydreigon. Like, I had absolutely no idea that he was going to have a Hydreigon. And the thing is that I, I forgot about how good Hydreigon was. I mean, it was a dragon dark type, so, I mean... Uh, I was I was screwed when it came to like five out of six of my Pokemon that I used where the only other Pokemon that I could use was Reshiram you know with the dragon type attacks and all that stuff man but it was just absolutely wild you know and I could have sworn that that thing is EV trained as well because it had so many crazy outspeeding moments you know um I even watched some crazy moments like on YouTube back then as well of uh, Hydreigon actually outspeeding Mineshow when we had a Let's Player uh, battle Getsis. I'm just like, what the f- this is so insane! Like, I'm just like, you gotta be joking me, man. But we end up beating him and I'm just like, yes, finally. It's like, whoo! That was like one of the more like scary battles I've ever had. Like, the, the, the music, the background, like just how- how dark things got, like, after N had lost, and the fact that he had his own father turn on him and stuff like that, you know, that was actually pretty dark and pretty scary, but, um, then we get to the post-game where I was actually able to go to the giant chasm and beat Kyurem, or not beat, sorry, uh, capture Kyurem, and I'm just like, yes, this is so awesome, and, you know, from there, it's like my obsession with Kyurem kind of grew on from there, and my hopes for him having, you know, new forms just kind of, like, blossom from there. I'm just like, man, if Black and White are going to have sequel games, like, Kyurem's got to have the Giratina treatment. And lo and behold, it did. Now, when Black 2 and White 2 came around, I'm just like, man, I am so, so excited. And the fact that they were continuing on the story, and I was just like, man, this is going to be so cool. And they added so much more to that generation, you know, new cities, uh, a new rival, and the thing is, he was your next door neighbor too, and he wasn't an asshole, like, he was very intense, but he was intense in a good way, you know, he was very protective, very loving of his sister, and very loving and protective of his Pokemon, and things like that, um, 
And I gotta say that the backstory behind, you know, Hugh and all that stuff was really sad and really touching. But I, I'm really happy that he was able to uh, finally, finally get back his sister's stolen Pokemon, which was a Lyperd. Well, it was a Purloin when it was first stolen, but then it became a Lyperd and all that stuff. And I gotta say, man, Generation, like... Generation 5 Black 2 and White 2 was definitely something that did not disappoint me whatsoever. And when I seen that Kiram actually was going to have its own story, I'm just like, man, this is so cool. I cannot wait. And then, man, oh, man, I got to say, when it got not one but two brand new forms, I'm just like, man, this is going to be lit. Let's fucking go, man. Let's go. And I'm just like, man, this is going to be so crazy, you know. Um... And the storyline was also very well done. It was absolutely amazing, you know. Um, for what the first set of Generation games, Generation 5 games last, sorry, it more than made up with, with Generation, with the Generation 5 second pair of games, you know. I'm getting all tongue-tied. I almost called Generation 5 Generation 2. But anyways, though, man, like, it's just absolutely amazing what they did with the Black 2 and White 2 games. Um, I was really happy with what they did with Kirim, you know, and I gotta say, like, when you actually got to face the champion, uh, that being Iris in Black 2 and White 2, I was actually, like, shocked, I'm just like, what, what happened to Alder? I thought he was gonna be the champion, because he was a champion in Black and White, and he had one of the most kick-ass themes there was, and I actually had grew kind of, like, a very, very big obsession with that theme, you know, I'm just like, man, this theme is, like, one of the best ever. I gotta hand it to Black and White, you know, Generation 5 had some of the best music that I've ever heard, you know, um, I know, again, that Generation 5 does get a fair bit of flack even till this day, but come on, man, it's like, it's, a, it's an awesome generation, why are you hating, man, it's like, you know, instead of being all negative and stuff, you know, like, look at the positives, like, look at what Generation 5 did for us fans, and I gotta say, man, like, Generation 5 was just absolutely amazing, there's so much I can share, but I, like I said, don't want to drag this video too long. It's already going past 30 minutes. Jesus, man. But I will say also one on a final note that another big time memory that really, really sticks out is the Pokemon World Tournament. I spent hours grinding there, you know? Like, I was testing out different teams, different Pokemon movesets, all that stuff. And I gotta say that the trainers that you would face off against were very, very, very challenging. Especially, like, the gym leaders, the patch champions, all that stuff, man. They were not messing around. Like, those NPCs, like, they, they, they could predict what you were doing. And I'm just like, man, this is so cool. This is honestly so cool, man. So, with all that being said, you know, like I said, Generation 5, grand slam of a game. You know, it did have its flaws, you know. It also had the biggest introduction, the biggest badge of Pokemon with, I believe, 156, uh, memory serves, like, th there, there was a lot of Pokemon, there, there was a lot of Pokemon, man, like, it, that, that was just, that was just absolutely insane, so, with that being said, it's now time to move on to Generation 6, and I was really excited about using Mega Blastoise 2, because not only was its stats and abilities just absolutely amazing, but it has cannons on its arms i'm just like are you serious it's like got goddamn arm cannons man and not to mention that's a big ass like mortal launch looking thing on like mounted on its back i'm just like man that is absolutely badass and here's the thing is that when i first used mega evolutions for pokemon it basically felt like you were using like an ubers kind of pokemon like it was just it was absolutely crazy and i absolutely loved mega evolution i love what they did with it <laughs> And I gotta say is that like another another great great memory when it came to Pokemon 6th generation was of course your battles with Lissandre like the graphics was just absolutely amazing and the music as well I mean I really dug the Silent City music like it was just it was so upbeat and so awesome but I gotta say though that when you battled against Lissandre especially for the last time uh the music it just it fit perfectly with the whole scenario, you know? After you would uh, end up encountering and catching your title legendary, depending on, depending on which generation, or which version, I should say, that you're playing, whether it's Pokemon X or Pokemon Y, Lissandre would try to take the power of that Pokemon back with his own access to Mega Evolution. And when I seen that, my eyes just lit right up. I'm like, 
what? I was like, are you serious? I'm like, what, what? Like, you gotta be joking. And when I seen the ba the background for when you guys battled, man, it looked like that the world was on fire and that the world was coming to an end if he was to beat you, you know? Like, that's what the world would be like if, if he was to beat you, you know? It, it was like you were battling on top of, like, a sun flare or something like that. Hence, you know, Team Flare and all that stuff. But... Man, it was just absolutely amazing, like the music, the setting, everything was amazing. And I remember I wiped out his entire team with my Evel Tall. It was so crazy. And when I first seen Gyarados Mega Evolve, I'm like, oh god, here we go, man. Like this thing is gonna be just so difficult to face off against. And not only did it look like a bloated up shrimp that was so pissed off, because it didn't get it didn't get like bigger as in like longer and more muscly and stuff. Like, well, maybe its bulk became its muscle. I don't even know, but like, man, like, I was just, I was laughing, but at the same time, I'm just like, oh shit, it's like, Gyarados, you know, an infamously powerful Pokemon, has now access to Mega Evolution, what do I do now, it's like, what the hell, but I was able to beat his whole team, and it was just absolutely amazing, right, but here's the thing though, perhaps my best memory, when it comes to Generation 6, Zygarde. Now, it's a little bit strange, and you're probably thinking that there's a bit of a trend going on here, that whenever there is a new generation, I always like the oddball legendary, you know, in Generation 4, it was Giratina, and I was thinking, it's like, Giratina's gonna have its own story behind it, and thus, that came to fruition when it came to Pokemon Platinum, and then we move on to Generation 5, and it was none other than Kirim that I loved the most, and sure enough, in Black 2 and White 2, it got not one, but two brand new forms, and I was thinking the same thing for Zygarde, that it was gonna get, you know, the Kirim Black treatment, you know, it's gonna get its own version of its own game, it's gonna get its own story, it's gonna get, you know, some OP as hell form and all that stuff, um, but unfortunately, though it didn't get its own exclusive game Pokemon Z which a lot of us including myself were expecting was gonna happen but it's, it's sad to say it didn't happen well it's sad but it's not because here's the thing is that um I wasn't wrong though when I was thinking that it was gonna get a new form and I mean Zygarde complete man I mean that thing is crazy crazy bulky it is so awesome man but here's the thing though is that when I came across Zygarde and, you know, I seen, like, the introduction to its battle and all that stuff, you know, where the screen suddenly turns all scaly and all that, and then you had the legendary theme, I'm just like, man, this is so awesome, like, I loved the legendary theme, it was so amazing, like, I, it was one of my best themes ever, it was one of my favorites, it was just so cool, I absolutely loved it, man. And here's the thing, is that, you know, I was really, really hoping that I could get a 6 IV Zygarde. But here's the thing, though, is I kind of knew that unless you were had some sort of, like, cheating device or something like that, you weren't going to get it, you know? Um, but here's the thing, is that I was a part of this amazing group. It was a uh, Cat's Epic Pokemon cloning group, if I remember correctly. And there was somebody who asked the question, can anybody clone my 6 IV Zygarde? You would not believe the amount of people that came flocking to me because they're like, Cory, Cory, it's like, you know, this guy's gonna 6 IV Zygarde. It's like, man, you like, just, are you excited? And when I, I thought they were lying. I thought they were trolling when that happened, but man, oh man, like, they, they were not lying when that shit happened, man. Woo! I was so excited, and I eventually was able to get myself a cloned 6 IV Zygarde of an adamant nature, and I'm just like, yeah, baby. Like, I was so hyped. I was so hyped, man, and I gotta say that from there, it's like, I gotta say that Generation 6 is probably one of the more cherishable generations I have ever come across, you know? Like, Generation 6 had a really good impact on me, you know, helped me make a lot of friends, and I gotta say, these are memories I will never, ever forget, you know? Woo! But with all that being said, let's now move on to Generation 7, yeah. Seven. Can't even count to seven on my own fingers. Okay, so now we get on to the most recent generation being Generation 7, Pokemon Sun and Moon, and Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And I gotta say, man, with this right here, I gotta say, there are so many memories for Generation 7. But here's the thing, though, is that Generation 7 is not yet over, you know? There, there's still lots of time for it to develop, especially when it comes to the competitive scene. Um, and there's already a whole bunch of talk and rumors and speculations and stuff about, you know, oh, like, Generation 8 and all this and all that. And I'm just like, man, whoa, 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 slow your roll, man. It's like Generation 7's been out for, like, a little over a year, and already it's like you're you're clamoring for another generation. Just, just, woo, 
woo! Hold, hold, hold the phone, man. Settle your tea kettle. But here's the thing, man, is that when Generation 7 came along, like, I was so excited. And you guys knew who my starter was going to be. It was going to be none other than Poplio because the thing is that I really adored Poplio. And, of course, when Poplio was first introduced, every, well, not everybody, but a lot of people were giving it grief. A lot of people were hating on it. And that's when, of course, my character Mega Crasher decides to step in, pull the fedora and the sunglasses, and rage up a storm about it and put them haters in their places, man. Like, it was just, it was so crazy, man. But... I gotta say, the build-up to Generation 7 was actually probably uh, one of my more fondest memories. Because, like, seeing the build-up, seeing, like, a whole bunch of information, a whole bunch of trailers drop, and even data mines dropping. I'm just like, what? Like, are you kidding? It's like, this is absolutely amazing, you know? And I was just, I was, like, over the moon when it came to the hype of Pokemon Sun and Moon, you know? Um, I was just like, man, it's like, I actually can't wait to play these games. And then, of course, when we got to play in these games, man, it did not disappoint you whatsoever, you know? Like, I was really, really happy with the way that things turned out. And also, ladies and gentlemen, is that you had a really interesting storyline that, you know, bounded you and Lily to more or less kind of travel together, right? Like, you had, like, a traveling companion, which was very, very different for what they did in past generation games. So, I was really intrigued with what they were going to be doing with this one here, uh, seeing where the story was going to take us. And I gotta say, man, uh, the character development of Lily was just absolutely fantastic you know that is another great memory of generation 7 was lily you know lily is like man it's like she had a lot of great character development and i was really really happy with you know just the way that things turned out right but then, ladies and gentlemen, another great memory happens to be your boy, the Team Skull boss, Guzma and Golisopod. Man, when I seen Golisopod, when I first seen that thing in battle, man, like, okay, when you couple the music, right? When you couple, like, its cry and it comes out and, you know, it strikes that pose like it's about ready to rip your face off, man. That's what made everything fall into place when it came to Golisopod being my favorite favorite 7th generation Pokemon, not legendary or not, you, you're not going to knock my boy Golisopod off its perch, man. Like, it is just, it is without a shadow of a doubt, one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, and especially my favorite 7th generation Pokemon. Like, it was just, it was going down, man. When you were facing off against Golisopod, you knew shit was going down, man. He was gonna be fucking someone's day up real bad. Like, it was just crazy. And just when you think that you had him beat, you know, he had that emergency exit ability to kick in, get himself out of battle, to go back in, and give you another hard-hitting first impression. And I gotta say, I really love what they did with that ability and with that mechanic. You know, if you know how to use emergency exit, then you that that Pokemon becomes a beast in battle. It's 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 it's, it's amazing, man. It is absolutely amazing. If you know how to use it, it will not disappoint you. So I, that's all I gotta say about that. But man, oh man, like Generation Seven, man, was Galissapod central when it came to memory. Now, of course, the hype did not stop there when it came to Generation 7, because then came Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Now, the hype for that was absolutely unreal, you know? I was, I was just so, so hyped. I was so ready for Generation 7.5, you know? I was ready for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and especially when I would find out that there would be uh, new forms for Necrozma. Because see, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that I knew that Necrozma was going to get its own story. I mean, the writing was basically on the wall. It was a Pokemon that was, you know, the third uh, oddball kind of legendary out of the trio of title legendaries. Like, you had Lunala, you had Solgaleo, and then, of course, you had Necrozma, which seemed like the mediocre out of the three Pokemon. But I'm like, okay, just you watch, ladies and gentlemen. Necrozma's going to get some love sooner rather than later. And, ladies and gentlemen, I was not disappointed because not only did Necrozma get access to the ability to fuse with Solgaleo or Lunala and basically becoming Dawn Wings or Dusk Mane and having really solid stats and typing, but get this, it had its own separate form being Ultra Necrozma, which far surpassed that of Solgaleo and Lunala. Just absolutely incredible, you know? And then we get on to the fact that new Ultra Beasts were introduced. But 
I gotta say though that out of everything that was introduced in that game, the fact that Ultra Necrozma became a thing was just, man, that was a thing of beauty, you know? I remember back when we were speculating about Pokemon Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, we seen like in between Ultra, in, 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 ugh, sorry, in between the likes of Duskmane and Dawn Wings, we would see like this uh, glowing star-shaped looking, I guess, like entity with what appeared to be eyes. Like we we're like some of us were thinking, is like, is that going to be a new Pokemon right there? Is that going to be Necrozma? Is that going to be a new form? You know, what the hell is the deal? Is it going to be a separate Pokemon that we haven't seen in the Alolan region? But sure enough, it became Ultra Necrozma, and the fact that it got its own story i was just over the moon with that man i was just like yes it's like this is actually this is so hype this is actually becoming a thing i am so excited let's go let's do this let's get it on man i was really excited and i gotta say without a shadow of a doubt I was not disappointed with Generation 7 whatsoever, you know, with Pokemon Sun and Moon and with Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, you know. I gotta say that Generation 7 provided me a lot of great memories, and I also gotta say, you know, a big time shout out to all of you guys out there who actually traded me shiny Pokemon that you guys had dedicated to me. I remember um, Screen Pigeon, aka James, he actually sent me a shiny Wimpod that he ended up breeding and made an adamant nature, and I'm just like, man, it's like, you, you know me all too well, man. You know that Golisopod is my favorite 7th uh, generation Pokemon. I mean, hell, I even made an entire video dedicated to Golisopod. Why, like, what Golisopod meant to me and why it's my favorite 7th generation Pokemon, things like that. And not to mention Jason as well, sending me a whole bunch of shiny Pokemon that he ended up catching or breeding or something like that. The first ever shiny Pokemon that he caught in that game was a shiny Execute. And he gave the son of a bitch to me. I'm just like, what? I'm like, seriously? This is crazy, man. Like, what the hell? It's just, oh, man. <laughs> I just got to say, like, seventh generation isn't even over. And I guarantee you, there's going to be more crazy memories to come. Just you watch, man. There's going to be a lot more craziness to go down. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that right there is finally, finally going to conclude this video. really apologize that this video was a lot longer than expected. But then again, when you're going through each and every single generation and trying to sum everything up, it, it is going to be a little bit lengthy. So I just want to say that I tried the very best I could to make things as summed up and to the point here as possible. But with that being said, though, guys, I want to say if you guys have sat through this whole video up until this very point much love to you guys like seriously it's like i i just i gotta say i really appreciate the amount of patience and the amount of love that you guys have for videos like these i mean the thing is that like i don't exactly like doing you know on the spot kind of like ramble type of videos and all that stuff um because there's a limitation when it comes to the amount of hype and excitement and all that stuff but i try the very best i can to make sure that i make things as hype as possible and as interesting as possible so with all that being said, guys, I want to say thank you guys all very, very much for watching this video. Um, like I said at the beginning of this video, please share down below um, what your favorite memories are of Pokemon from each generation. And with that said, it's like that's going to be it. So I want to say thank you guys all very much for watching. And also, like I said at the beginning of this video, happy Pokemon Day, you know. This was a really, really, really solid day. The fact that it is 22 years going on strong of Pokemon hype. I'm really happy, you know, and I'm really proud to be a Pokemon fan, and I hope you guys are too. I mean, obviously you guys would be, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting through a near hour of this sort of video, right? So, thanks again, guys, for all your love and all your support. Again, I sincerely apologize if uh, the length of this video was a little bit, you know, you could say of, like, a turnoff from, you know, wanting to sit through the whole thing. To be honest with you, I don't blame you, because it's like, when it comes to lengthy videos like these... It can be a little bit hard to sit through, uh, but I wanted to say that, you know, I try to make things as entertaining and as summed up as possible, but like I said, considering there's a lot to talk about here, you know, it's going to be long either way. So, thank you guys all very much for watching. Don't forget, I love each and every single one of you guys. We'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget, subscribe, support, stay positive, keep it 100, and I'll see you guys next upload. It's now time for two more Tuesdays. Woo! Another late upload coming, man. Have a good night and stay tuned.